Now you'll notice in this simultaneous equation that I've got an xy term. And when you have an xy term, you need to use the method of substitution. So in the usual way, number the equations 1 and 2. And then we take the equation, the simpler of the two equations, and in this case it's going to be the second equation, because it hasn't got any xy terms in. It's just a simply a linear equation. We've got x to the power 1 and y to the power 1. So it's a much simpler equation. And from this, we've got to make either x or y the subject. Now, we could make x the subject, but I'll tell you why I'm not going to do it in this particular example. Because if I did make x the subject, we would have 2x would equal 2 minus y. And then I would divide by 2 to both sides, and that would leave me with x equals 2 minus y all over 2. And what I've got here is a fraction. And I would have to substitute 2 minus y over 2 wherever I saw an x in equation number 1. And it's going to lead me into a fractional equation. It shouldn't be difficult to solve, but nonetheless, I don't fancy doing fractional equations. So I'm not going to opt for x to be the subject from 2, but to make y the subject, because that won't give me any fractions. OK, so we'll rub that out, and we'll carry on. Now, always make sure that you say which equation you're working from. So in this particular example, from 2. What I'm going to do is make y the subject. So from 2, we see that y equals 2 minus 2x. And when you get down to making your subject equation, make sure you call that, say, number 3. What we're going to do now is substitute, sub for short, OK, equation 3 into equation 1. So again, tell the reader what you're doing, makes it very simple for them to follow through. OK, so we now have x times y, so we have x, and in place of y we have 2 minus 2x, so write that in there. Then we have minus x equals minus 10. And we have an equation now in terms of one variable, in this example x, and so we should be able to solve it. And to solve this, we expand the bracket here, and if we do that we get 2x, and then x times minus 2x is minus 2x squared, and then we have the minus x on the end, equals minus 10. Group together the terms here, and we have minus 2x squared, and we have the two uh, x terms here, 2x minus x, that's going to be plus x, equals negative 10. Now, we've got an x squared term here, so this is a quadratic equation. And like all quadratic equations, you need to bring all the terms to one side and make it equal to 0. So I could add 10 to both sides, and I would have minus 2x squared plus x plus 10 equals 0. But I don't like starting with a negative x squared term, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. So that's going to give me 2x squared minus x minus 10 equals 0. All I need to do now is factorize this. So a couple of brackets, OK, equals 0. It's going to be a 2x and an x. And then it wants to be a 5 and a 2. 5 and the 2 will multiply together to give a 10. I need a minus 10, though, and retain a minus x. So it's going to be a minus there, that's minus 5x, and a plus here, so that will be plus 4x. Minus 5x plus 4x is minus x. OK, so I've factorized it. That leads me to say that either 2x minus 5 will equal 0, or x plus 2 equals 0. 
I'll carry on down here. So I've got 2x minus 5 equals 0, and if I add 5 to both sides, I'd have 2x equals 5, and dividing them by 2, I would end up with x equals 5 over 2. And then for this one, x plus 2 equals 0, if I was to subtract 2 from both sides, it would leave me with x equaling minus 2. So I have two values now of x. I need to find out the corresponding values of y that goes with these particular values of x. And so all I need to do is substitute these values into either 1, 2 or 3 to find out what y would be. Now, it's much easier to always substitute it into your equation 3 because it will tell us what y is directly without having to rearrange it if you were to substitute into equation 1 or 2. So I'm going to say substitute into 3. So when x equals 5 over 2, or 2 and a half if you like, sub in 3, okay, and we get that y equals 2 minus 2 lots of 5 over 2. 2 lots of two and a half. Well that's going to be minus five. Two take away five is minus three. So we have y equals minus three when x is five over two. Similarly, we're going to say that when x equals minus two, sub this value also into three, and we have that y equals 2 minus 2 times whatever x is. 2 minus 2 times x, which is now minus 2. So minus 2 times minus 2 is 4. 2 and 4 make 6. So just summarize your results at the end. And so we have therefore x is 5 over 2. Therefore x equals 5 over 2, comma, and y equals minus 3. Or as a separate result, we have x equals minus 2 up here, okay, and when we had x was minus 2, we found that y was 6, so y equaled 6. Always get in the habit then of summarizing your results at the end. Now, I'd like to just point out at this stage that sometimes you'll get questions which will say, show where these two curves well, this is a line, I know, but this will be a curve, this will be a line. Find out where they intersect. And what this would mean is that you would solve these simultaneously. You're trying to find coordinates where the two graphs intersect. Those two coordinates would be these particular points down here. x is 5 over 2, y is minus 3, and x is minus 2, y is 6. And I'll show you. Now you can see the graphs of xy minus x equals minus 10 and the graph of 2x plus y equals 2 and this is where they intersect and if you look closely you can see that this point here is where x is minus 2 and the y coordinate is 6. That was one of the solutions there and that we had to the simultaneous equation and over here the other point of intersection, you'll notice, a bit hard to read though on this graph, but that point is at 2.5 or 5 over 2, and the y coordinate is at minus 3. And that was the other solution to the simultaneous equation. So, solutions then to simultaneous equations are where the two graphs intersect. Now, I hope that you've been able to follow this tutorial and that brings us to the end so just try and use this particular example as a model for any of the other substitution examples that you might come across.